So about eight or so years ago, I was dropping off a friend at work, and as I was kind of reversing out of the driveway, I misread what I thought would be a rise in the concrete. Instead, it was actually a, a kind of concrete drop of about 20 centimetres. The left-hand uh, back wheel dropped over the side, and the car kind of just benched itself like that. And I ended up blocking the whole driveway into the building from tr all traffic going both ways. It was utterly horrific being the cause of a monumental vehicular snarl up. And I've never really gotten over the shame and the intense unforgiving stares of other drivers and passers-by. So when I turned on the news the other day, I literally did a double take. A massive container ship is blocking the Suez Canal in Egypt. That ship is causing an epic traffic jam at sea. Its Taiwan-based operator said the ship ran aground after being Look turned sideways by strong Look winds. Look at that. I know. I knew exactly what the captain of that massive ship was going through. I was there right alongside the captain. And for the next six days, so were we all. Initially, it was hard to even understand what had happened and how it happened. But it's probably going to be very, very annoying. How does a tanker get stuck, though? It was annoying, particularly to this guy, who even seemed a bit disgusted with the whole thing. It's so bigger than the, the, the Eiffel Tower and stuck in the muck. Oh, oh the muck. Ugh. And then came the avalanche of numbers. About 5% were down more than 2% right now. Around 12% of global trade goes through the Suez Canal. 52 ships a day. $10 billion a day. Over a trillion dollars of, of goods each year. 10% of the global crude oil supply. 300 stranded ships. It was all extremely overwhelming. You have to worry about bank suction, which then would actually suck the stern of the ship towards the bank and kick your bow out towards the center of the channel. All right, we're using a lot of nautical terms there. It sounds like it's just difficult to navigate. Oh, thank God. Someone had to stand up, draw a line in the sand and say, hey, no more nautical talk. <laughs> and you got a funny name. Let's get the jokes about your name being Captain Morgan. We'll let the people on Twitter do that one. And they didn't catch it quick enough and, you know, they went across the bank. All right, Captain McManus. We know your name's not really Captain Morgan. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. In fact, it became clear the only appropriate way to navigate the nitty-gritty of the situation was through the medium of sea shanties. The Suez log jam delay blocks 7 billion pounds of goods a day. The global supply chain wants a ship to take its leave and go. And among all that, the Suez Canal Authority was putting out its own inappropriately intense videos, apparently scored by a Hans Zimmer non-union equivalent. And then they got it floating again, just by getting some tough wee tugs to get in there and give it the old push and pull, like they were moving in a new fridge. And everyone was very happy. But perhaps none more so than the crew of the tugboat Monsieur, who you would have been forgiven for thinking they were buzzing out over a local football result, rather than celebrating their part in restarting global trade. The cool thing is that they're literally shouting out, Mashur is number one, which is bloody charming if you ask me. And so for this whole thing, I think we came to understand that somehow this absolute unit of a ship and its little digger friend who was ineffectually digging away at the side of the canal, somehow both of them became emblematic of the rubbish times that we find ourselves in. Not since Sesqui 1990 has an event so crystallised the idea that for all humankind's impressive advancements and skills, we are actually quite shit at avoiding completely foreseeable disasters. But at the very least, I think we can all say that we're galactic level geniuses at creating amusing flim flam online. <laughs>